Hello, my name is Simon Stix and I'm the creator of the DirectX 11 grass shader. In this tutorial, I will show you how to use the CPU fallback to automatically generate a simplified texture atlas and set up the fallback for platforms that either don't support the grass shader or don't have the performance to use it. I have timestamped the video, so if you're looking for information on a specific topic, look at the video description for more information. As always, let's start with our tutorial plane with a nature mesh filter and a grass renderer attached. The grass renderer already has a material attached, as you can see. By the way, even if you don't plan to use the DirectX 11 grass at all, you still can't delete the grass renderer. It's used to store the material with all the density information for the fallback script. Now to begin, I'm adding the grass fallback component to our plane object. If you actually want to use it as a fallback, just leave both scripts enabled and the fallback will automatically be enabled when the shader isn't supported. This has actually confused me quite a bit at times when I was making changes to the shader and compile errors activated the grass fallback and my changes didn't seem to do anything because I didn't notice that the fallback was on. If you don't want to use the grass renderer and the DirectX 11 grass shader or you simply want to work on the visuals of the grass fallback, simply disable the grass renderer and the fallback will be used instead. Right now the grass simply vanished. That's because the grass fallback material hasn't been generated yet. For this, simply press the Generate Texture Atlas button and the script will do the rest. After a few seconds of processing, we get the working CPU fallback. I will cut out the texture generating in the rest of this tutorial. I skip the clear fallback cache button for now, I'll explain it when it becomes relevant. The first important part of the fallback is the material preprocessor. When you press the generate button, it takes a grass material and renders a new texture atlas with several variations for each texture type. Now let's look at this preprocessor. As usual for procedural algorithms, the seed changes the random variations of your process. The same seed with the same settings will lead to the same results. Blades of Grass defines the density of grass for each billboard. Use it to fine tune the density of your grass. In this case I think it matches our previous grass approximately. Of course we don't have enough billboards to get the same look as before. Let me quickly show you the result of using a higher and a lower amount of grass. Alright, here you can see the fallback with 25 blades of grass per billboard. This is the default setting now. In case you're wondering why the fallback looks different be than before, that's because I just fixed the bug that made the fallback look really ugly. I guess explaining all features of the package is one way of testing them. Anyways, let me show you the fallback with other grass densities. Here are the billboards with a density of 5 blades of grass per billboard which is obviously not enough. Also we can see some problems with the texture here. Playing around with the texture cutoff on both the shader and on the fallback, which I'll show you later, could help with these problems. But either way, the billboard density should be higher. So let's try something insane like uh, 200 blades of grass. It's more of a grass blob now. It's all a matter of balance. Just play around with the setting to see what fits your scene. I don't think there's a way of automating the setting. It's really about your scene and preference. Now let me revert it to 25 again and let's continue with the next setting. Specular lights look quite well on individual blades of grass, but in my opinion they don't really work in the billboard version. As you can see they're missing all of the detail and interaction with the sun. So instead you'll probably just want to disable them. I'm not sure if I'm I'm going to turn this into a default setting. I won't remove it though. There might be some situations where it's still useful to have specular lighting. Without specular lighting it looks a lot better in my opinion. So for the fallback you could just disable it. Target texture size is the total size of the texture atlas. The different billboard textures will share this space. Be aware that in some Unity versions the target texture size is ignored in the texture import settings. I'm not sure why this happens. I'm setting it in the code so the importer should work as usual, but maybe it's a bug in Unity or I'm just doing something wrong in newer versions. If you feel like your textures don't have the fidelity they should have, go into the fallback folder right next to your material, select all of the textures and set the ma max size to the right size. Right here we have a lot more detail I think. 
The next setting is rows per grass type. It defines how many rows each grass type will get. As there are four grass types, the total amount of grass rows is this value times four. The texture tiles are all squares, so there will be the same amount of columns as there are rows. For example, if you set two rows per grass type, each grass type will have two rows with eight textures each, so 16 textures in total. This is a bit unintuitive out of technical reasons, but you only have to remember that a higher number for this setting will lead to more variation per texture type. As the texture space will be shared by more tiles, the texture size per billboard will also be lower, so higher values will lead to more pixelated grass. Now let's move on to more intuitive settings again. Texture anti-aliasing, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, uses more performance while pre-processing, but leads to smoother edges on the atlas. Texture padding scales down the individual tiles on the texture atlas to reduce textures blending into each other. In case you're seeing some strange lines on top of the billboards, you should increase this setting. Dilation steps removes dark borders around your fallback textures, but at least at the time of this tutorial's making, I haven't been able to get it to work perfectly. If your textures don't look like they should after generating the atlas, try reducing dilation to zero. Density cutoff can be used to completely remove the fallback billboards in low density areas. So in case the plane had an area where we don't want any grass at all, with a low density cutoff setting it could happen that still some billboards will be rendered there. Increase it to remove these billboards again. It can also help with performance because sometimes too low density textures will be taken into the texture atlas. So you have black squares with no texture at all, which will be rendered as normal, so you'll just have transparent billboards with traced performance. So let's look at the fallback texture for a second. And as you can see, we have one square here that isn't used at all. I'll try increasing the density cutoff to a higher value and regenerate the atlas. If you look at the atlas texture again, you can see that no empty squares are left. The last one is filled up. By the way, if you're wondering about the big empty area here, I'll explain that later. If you set the density cutoff value too high, you won't have grass in areas where it should be. This is probably one of the more important settings if you want the fallback to match the shader as close as possible. Density randomization can be used to increase variation in areas with the same density value. Instead of taking the same texture for all billboards, it randomly selects some textures that are slightly denser or less dense than the perfectly matching one. On the other hand, if you set this value too high, you might get grass types in areas where they shouldn't be at all. For example, flowers over there where I didn't draw them. Balance densities is a feature I wanted to make to fix the black area in the texture, but I wasn't able to get it working perfectly yet. I had to stop debugging it out of time constraints, but it does work in some instances. Here's what it does. If you look at our fallback textures, as I have mentioned before, you can see that large parts of them are completely empty. This is because we don't use all four grass types. The preprocessor leaves a space empty for each grass type, even if you don't use them at all. Balance density would instead use the texture space depending on how often the grass type occurs on the density texture. For example, if we have blades of grass on 90% of our area, and flowers in the other 10%, the grass would also get 90% of the texture atlas. In my tests, it led to some grass types simply not rendering at all. Hopefully, I'll be able to fix this in a future version. You can probably ignore the next two settings without worrying. They are very minor performance settings. The only reason I don't remove them completely is in case some rare use case makes them important for some reason. I don't even know, they could probably just be constants in the code. Anyways, here's what they do. Histogram samples defines how many samples the algorithm takes from the density texture in order to calculate the most frequent grass densities. So for example, if you have a lot of low density grass but very little high density grass, it will render more variations for lower grass densities than for the higher ones. This is basically the same principle I wanted to use for the balanced densities, but only within one grass type. Lookup table entries defines in how many densities the texture tiles will be categorized. 
If this count is too low, the fallback won't be able to differentiate between the different atlas tiles. But with 100 this shouldn't be a problem. If you use a very high rows per grass type setting, you should probably also increase the lookup table entries. But even then it's probably not even necessary. Just leave it as 100 and you'll be fine. The internal variables are, as you might guess from the name, internally used by the preprocessor. Don't change their values, all your changes would be overwritten when you're pressing the generate button again. You can look at the fallback material though, if you're interested in the internal workings or if you can't find the atlas textures anymore for some reason. Alright, now that we've discussed all preprocessor settings, Let's move on to the fallback renderer itself. Once again, the seed defines the variations for all random parts of the algorithm. If you change it, for example, let's set it to 1111, you won't actually see any changes yet. This brings us back to the clear fallback cache button. The fallback generates the positions for all billboards and stores them in a cache which increases performance quite drastically. When we press the clear cache button, you delete all stored information and force the fallback renderer to recalculate them with your new settings. The performance settings are the settings that define the performance cost of the fallback. Use instancing enables GPU instancing. This is a lot faster than generating all billboards on the CPU, but it's not supported on all hardware. My whole point with this fallback is compatibility. So instead of creating yet another constraint or sacrificing performance, I decided to implement both methods. The level of detail settings can be used to set multiple density levels, including their fade out behavior. On the GPU, we have a lot more restrictions, which lead to the density settings in the shader. But with the fallback, we have complete control. You could use a single density that fades out far away, or use as many levels as you want to create an extremely smooth blending effect. Size defines the amount of levels of details you want, and each level has a density which is in unity units, so 0.5 means one billboard per squared unity unit. Fade start defines where the fading out starts, and fade end defines where the billboards vanish completely. If you look closely, you can see that each billboard actually consists of three individual billboards. You can set this with the billboards per spot setting. If we decrease it to one, we get one randomly rotated billboard, which looks, well, not very great in my opinion. If you increase it, you get denser spots that look less like billboards and more like actual grass. Don't put it too high though, as the repeated textures will not look very great. So let's set it back to three. I think 3 is a very nice blend between both. Of course adding more billboards will also increase performance cost. Billboards per octree node is once again a minor performance setting. You can play around with it, but I didn't notice any significant performance differences. Don't set it too high though or the octree, which is the main optimization behind the fallback, will lose its positive effect. The smoothing options are pretty much the same as with the grass shader. You can smooth the texture alpha value, the billboard width and height. Nothing unexpected here. Last of all are the visual settings. The first three settings are the same as in any other renderer. You can set their layer, their shadow casting mode and re if they're receiving shadows or not. The last settings are all overrides for the fallback material. As I said before, you shouldn't change the internal material, so these settings are here so you can still change some of their values. The width multiplier can be used to stretch out your billboards. This might no longer perfectly replicate the grass material, but you can make the fallback seem more dense without the stretching being noticeable. The texture cutoff settings change the material's cutoff value as expected. Change it if you feel like unwanted parts of your texture were rendered or if too much of them was cut away. If you enable the override subsurface scattering setting, the slider below will be used to set the subsurface scattering instead of using the value of the original material. This is useful if you use a material without randomized orientation, where subsurface scattering isn't available. So instead of having to use the default value of the shader in general, you can just change it directly to see what fits your scene again. With this, you should be able to get good looking grass even on platforms where DirectX 11 isn't supported. Thanks for watching this tutorial. 
If you have more questions, requests, or simply want to give me feedback, you can contact me on the Unity Forums thread through the contact form on my website or on Twitter, all linked below. If you've created a game or a beautiful scene with my shader or its fallback, I'd be happy to see them, maybe even post them on the asset store page with your permission and watermark.